Welcome to Bird Ultrasound Case of the Week. This week I've got two individual cases of unusual Baker's cyst extension where the cyst actually extends through an intramuscular location. This is the first case and this patient presents to me with uh, a swollen knee and a swollen medial calf as well. So I started my examination just by having a look at the knee joint for a, a joint effusion and just put the transducer on that suprapatellar recess and immediately I could see that there's a pathological joint effusion. As I was scanning through this joint effusion I just thought to myself that there was a few low level echoes inside the fluid and so I turned the gain up a little bit and as I turned the gain up I could see that it really started to look more like this is likely to be a hemarthrosis. So I think this, uh, this patient has got a significant amount of volume of blood inside the knee joint itself. So this explains why the knee's a little bit swollen and, um, and then it was a matter of sorting out why the calf was swollen as well. If I just came to the side of the knee, over to the lateral side of the knee, you could see sort of uh, shining the ultrasound beam in underneath the patella there. You could really get a good look at those red blood cells. So you can really now start to see that it's definitely a hemarthrosis. You get that classic low level echo. The, it's really the scattering reflection of the red blood cells that uh, produce this type of pattern where you get this sort of low level echo. And you can also see the way that blood's quite sticky. It uh, moves quite slowly, unlike, unlike synovial fluid or clear fluids. It's a more viscous type of uh, movement that you see in blood and this is a classic hemarthrosis. When I come around the back of the knee then, so I come around into the popliteal fossa, there's there's a very tiny Baker's cyst, so nothing really to see there. But then as I move down and follow that Baker's cyst down into the calf, you can see that all of a sudden you're getting this, what looks like a mass forming inside the medial head of gastrocnemius muscle belly. Now this is not uh, not a mass per se, but this is a, a, just a direct extension of that Baker's cyst into an intramuscular location. So what's happened here is that the semimembranosus medial gastrocnemius bursa of the knee, which is the, the bursa that we colloquially call the, the Baker's cyst, has managed to find a way to get inside the fascia of the medial gastrocnemius muscle. So it's managed to uh, find a, a little small perforation, perhaps where a little vein has in, entered and exits from, and it, it's, it's got itself in through that little defect in the fascia. And once it's inside the medial gastrocnemius fascia, then the pressure of that hemarthrosis, just the continuous bleeding, the buildup of uh, fluid has just accumulated inside the medial gastrocnemius facial space there and leads to this what looks like a large complex mass but it's just a big hematoma. So this hematoma or if you like Baker's cyst extension will communicate with the knee joint and hence the hemarthrosis from the knee is exactly the same uh, product as what we're seeing in the medial gastrocnemius here. It did raise a small concern for me. I just thought, well, how certain can I be that I'm not dealing with an intramuscular sarcoma, for example? But as I uh, scan through it, it's very clear this just look, looks like blood product and it has very w well circumscribed edges. And I can follow it right back to the absolute classic Baker's cyst location. You can see I'm following it proximally now. And as I'm heading proximally, you can see that we end up right back at that classic Baker's cyst location between the medial head of gastroc there and the semimembranosus tendon. Just to be sure, I just put the uh, the power Doppler on it and just made sure that we're not seeing any flow whatsoever. And so even with using a, a, a low PRF and a lot of gain and very light transducer pressure, there's just no flow whatsoever, whatsoever with inside this hematoma. So it's just a, a, a blood-filled uh, knee joint, so a hemarthrosis, which is then uh, ruptured out through into the Baker's cyst posteriorly, filled the Baker's cyst with the same blood that's in the knee joint, and then that Baker's cyst has then managed to find a small little defect in the medial gastrocnemius fascia. It's worked its way inside that, and then it's just found that as a space of least resistance, and it's just formed a large hematoma, if you like a Baker's cyst extension, inside the medial gastrocnemius. Here's another example, a separate case, but of a similar pathology. And so what we can see here is the patient presented with a calf lump. So when I'm scanning the calf lump here, this is down in the sort of distal medial gastrocnemius or mid to distal anyway. And I just see this sort of cystic structure and I think, oh, it's okay, maybe it's a little a little muscle bleed. Maybe we've had a, a tear of the medial gastrocnemius. Maybe it's a, after a contusion injury, something like this. So I, I take the patient's history and find out if there's any trauma or any previous injury, but everything comes back negative. So I'm left now with just a cystic 
uh, small cystic space inside medial gastrocnemius. In the long ax axis, you can see it's sort of ovoid in shape. It's a reasonably clean edges and just looks like it's full of uh, just clear serous fluid. So I didn't think too much of it. But uh, put the Doppler on it, no flow in it either. But when I scanned through it in real time, I just felt like I couldn't really define the upper margin of it. It felt like it just sort of continued along a little bit. So what I'm doing now is I'm scanning uh, from the knee joint down. So I'm coming down from the knee joint. And if you can just see this little round area here, just this small little cystic space, again, just sitting just inside the fascia of medial gastrocnemius. And I could follow that all the way down from a Baker cyst location until I arrived at my little cystic space down here. So what I'm hypothesizing here is exactly the same as the previous case, and I'm following it back up towards the knee now, so keep following it up. So I'm just underneath the fascia of medial gastroc, and I'll get that classic Baker cyst location. This is the left calf, of course, this is medial gastrocnemius on this side, and we had the semimembranosis on that side. So uh, what we're seeing here is this is another extension of a Baker cyst that's found its way into the medial gastrocnemius. This one does not contain any blood, and is much smaller than the previous example, but it's just another great example of an intramuscular extension of a Baker's cyst. Starting at the Baker's cyst end and coming down, you can just get your eyes on that little track, just that small little, almost like a syrinx type track that's coming all the way down and then we arrive at a little cystic space at the end, a little reservoir right at the end here. So remember with Baker's cysts, uh, we can have Baker's cysts that just sit in that usual location between medial gastrocnemius and semimembranosis. Then we can have a superficial rupture. The superficial rupture will leak into the soft tissues between medial gastrocnemius and the subcutaneous, so in the subcutaneous space. And then we have a deep rupture as well, where it, where it uh, tracks down between the medial head of gastrocnemius and soleus. And then of course you can have these unusual variants, which is uh, where we can have an intramuscular extension. So Baker's cysts, uh, you think they're quite simple, but every now and then they throw a little curveball at you and give you something different to think about, leaving you scratching your head. It's a wonderful job, isn't it? Happy scanning, and bye for now.